Then, uh, who, I should say, um, uh, was, I guess, the, the sum of my Saturday mornings for a long part of my life with uh, three of the greatest uh, Australian pop songs, uh, our love songs, I guess, Heaven Knows, uh, Walk Away Renee, and... Uh, not a Day Goes not a, By. Not A Day Goes By, <laughs> exactly. Three big ones, but uh, there were yeah. many more than that. But, um, mate, it's a pleasure to catch up. You're here Likewise. in Brisbane to talk about the John Denver story, but uh, before we get into that, can I ask a bit about the Rick Price story? You're, sure, yeah. You're, you were born in Bow Desert. Uh, I, I was born in Bow Desert, um, and we had a family band when we were kids, and we used to play at all the barn dances. That's how I got started in You're music. You're kidding. Yeah, because surrounding the whole Bow Desert area, there's a lot of little you know, farming communities, and they all had their own community hall, and they used to run barn dances on Friday and Saturday nights. What That's a, how, that was my apprenticeship. What a wonderful <laughs> apprenticeship. Um, it was, I it mean, was great, it's, great it's places life. like that where, you know, your audiences will really let you know quickly how good your music flying. Um, yeah, yeah, they were honest, they were an honest audience, and my grandfather used to go around the, um, and pretend that he didn't know who we were, and he'd say, what do you think of these kids? Are they any good or what? <laughs> and he'd get the report back on you know what what the what the people would thought about us, which is pretty funny. Um, when I covered Prince William, who visited Brisbane recently, I told yeah. my wife I had to go um, cover it, and uh, she was reasonably excited. When I told her I was speaking to Rick Price today, she was <laughs> over the moon wow. and uh, practically swooning. Well, there's a big uh, cheerio out there. Fiona, what's your Fiona? Fiona. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here with you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, um, she was you know, a big fan of those songs that I mentioned before. Yeah. Can you paint a picture of that period of your life for me? Um, just the, yeah. the craziness of it. Um, you were massive. Um, and you know, the clips are a vivid part of all our memories. So anyone who, was, you know, uh, who saw them back in the day, yeah. um, you know, um, what was it like for you, though, in, the, in that storm? It was, uh, it was a bit of a storm at times. Uh, when you... You know, because your life changes from being, you know, from obscurity into all of a sudden you know, people know who you are, you walk down the street and people talk to you. Generally speaking, it was fantastic. Everyone was, you know, was really nice to me. I didn't have any real major dramas. Um, and it was exciting though because I think as a kid, you know, I just dreamt about writing and recording my own songs, having a record deal and, you know, having an album. And, and so it all came to fruition and it was like, you know, I was pinching myself a little bit to say, hey, is this really happening? But, you know, the thing that comes with that is there's a responsibility to maintain that mm -hmm. career and mm -hmm. to keep writing music and, you know, touring and trying to juggle, um, you know, your private life and, and your professional life is always a challenge. But, um, you know, no, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't swap any of it. It's a great experience. What changes since then um, have you have you noticed? I mean, for example, is it? I, I'm always amazed by the high notes on not, "Not a Day Goes By." I mean, that song really hits some uh, high peaks. There, yeah. <laughs> bravely go where no man has gone before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, what about that? Things like that, just voiceover over time, and and and, and the importance of, for example, blending into new pastures like the John Denver story. Yeah. Well, it's been interesting vocally. Um, I, I, I can still sing up there and I still have all those notes, mm -hmm. but I don't sing up there as much. I got sick of it, to be honest. I got sick of just uh, singing high and loud a lot of, like I didn't do it all the time, but um, you know, the, I, I was singing right up at the top end edge of my range and I don't, I just don't think that's necessary all the time. Really Plus, as a songwriter I sort of, I hope that I've matured and I've grown up a little bit and you sort of start to do less of the circus tricks and more of what really counts. Excellent. So now I'm, I'm down lower into my register and I'm working that a lot more. It's mm. something I actually secretly always wanted to be better at because mm. mm. my high register was like, you know, tick, done, got it, you know. But the low register was always a, um, a challenge for me to really to get control of. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I've been working on that, and my voice has, I think, naturally deepened a lot, you know, in the, over the years. But uh, also too for storytelling, which is kind of what I'm more into yeah. these days, I suppose, and have been for the last decade. Yeah. Um, is that it's more, you know, singing down in that warmer range. Mm. It's easier to listen to and to tell a story. It's hard to sort of tell a story to someone when you're screaming at them from a yeah, high pitch. Yeah, yeah. And it's just personally what I like, you know, I think it's a little fatiguing to have someone singing high and loud at you all the time. Yeah, yeah. So I can still do it, uh, but I don't do it as much, you know. 
or one of the great masters of a whisper to a thunder was uh, John Denver. I mean, his, his ability to, to use that, as you said, the warmth of a, of a voice. Um, yeah. Tell me about this great man and uh, what, why you chose to really um, pay tribute to him in, in this show. Yeah, well, I was invited by the company to put it together, so the script was written and it was all laid out for me and I was just invited to do it. You know, do you want to, be, uh, do you want to present this show? And so I said yes, um, for two reasons. One, I am an admirer of John and his work. He wrote timeless classics that, you know, that have stood the test of time, a long time, yeah, and they'll live on, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're a young guy, you know this, his songs, that's mm -hmm. pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, there's that aspect. And also, I thought it would be challenging to take on a job as a narrator, you know, because it's not just, oh, telling a little story about the song and then singing the song. It's a full narration, mm -hmm. which I I've really enjoyed, you know, I love that aspect of it, so, because I really get to connect with the story, connect with the audience, and it's challenging for me, but, you know, the thing is about John Denver that I discovered about him is that he did, not only did he have the great vocal range and, the, and uh, you know, beautiful voice, and his songs and everything, but he really was a consummate performer, he gave 110% <laughs> everything he did, you know, yeah. in his life, and on the stage, and I admired that. Well, Rick, thank you so much for your time today. Would you mind closing us and treating us to a, um, to a, to a John Denver gem? A gem? Okay, well, I'll, I'll do something gentle for you, okay, without screaming at you this close. You fill up my senses Like a night in the forest Like the mountains in springtime like a walk in the rain Like a storm in the desert Like a sleepy blue ocean Come let me love you Come love me again My wife's crying right now, so oh, well. I'm sure. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rick Pleasure, Price. Brother. Good luck with the show, mate. Thank, Thank you, you, mate. Thank you.